So, who can tell me the main danger area of a helicopter? Tail. Yeah, tail rotor is going to be your biggest danger area. Um, that's where people lose heads. Um, and some of these birds uh, do have storage compartments that are in somewhat difficult to reach places because of the tail rotor. But always be aware of the tail rotor, especially in Arma 2. There are occasions where you will stop a bird and the tail rotor will look stopped. But in Arma 2, for some reason, it's still spinning and will still decapitate people. So when dealing with loading passengers, uh, yourself, your crew, uh, always ensure that travel is always around the front of the bird. Um, you should never pass behind it unless you are a very uh, good distance away. Do take things as well, rotors do on some helicopters will have a complex collision model, so you may find that if you're on a uneven landing terrain and your passengers are getting out, they can be struck by the rotors, in which case you have to instruct them prior to landing that they will want to avoid the main rotors. Correct. You should always establish uh, with your passengers, cargo and crew, uh, which sides are safe to exit and enter on. Uh, as well as the path around the helicopter if it comes into question. Um, if you see anybody hanging out around the rear of your helicopter, even if it's not on, just let them know that's not a really safe place to be. Uh, quick question? Uh, yeah. I don't, don't, didn't think that in A2 you could simulate getting out on the left or the right. It just, you you can right now. H has brought in a new feature that gives you jump out left and jump out right. Oh, okay. So yep, is that on the main scroll wheel or do you have to... Uh, yeah, it's on the scroll wheel. Uh, be advised because that doesn't work for uh, certain helicopters like the Chinook. Well, the Chinook is a rear loading helicopter, so. Indeed. Yeah, all <laughs> helicopters that have side doors have the system in place. Only cool. the MIA Chinook and the Merlin do not have the system. Thanks. All right, phase three. Uh, when you're the pilot of a helo, it's your job to ensure the safety of the vehicle, safety of the crew, and safety of your passengers. No matter what your tasking is, flying is dangerous, uh, and you have to be aware and present at all times. Uh, so the key points are know your surroundings. This means when you're taking off, landing, hovering, uh, or just being around the bird in general, know the surroundings. Make sure you know where any nearby obstacles are. Um, where potential uh, hazards are on your flight path in and out, uh, and be aware of other vehicles, especially in the area. Uh, a lot of times we don't have proper ATC or formations going on, so you have to be extremely careful. If you're blessed with a crew, uh, meaning door gunners or crew chief, uh, their job should also be to help you find nearby obstacles as you're flying, and they'll give you guidance on where you're clear to move. Because uh, as a pilot, you can't see much uh, beyond the uh, periphery of the cockpit. Know your cargo. Um, this is really important, uh, especially when you're doing jobs like medevac. When I say know your cargo, I'm not just talking about whether you have a ammo box shoved in the back of the bird. I'm talking anybody besides the crew and the pilot that is in the bird is considered your cargo. So you need to know how many people, um, whether they're all in, uh, whether they're all out. Uh, and be aware of any special needs uh, of those groups, whether you need to drop off you know, two people at this location, three at that. Make sure that's in your mind. Write it down on a notepad. Uh, just know what you're moving around. Uh, too often, people get you know left behind, dropped off in the wrong place, shit like that. When you're doing a job like medevac uh, and the medevac request comes in, uh, they should always list a number of casualties that you need to transport out. Make sure you count that number, because you don't want to leave one behind that was having a hard time getting to the uh, helicopter for whatever reason, uh, and they have to come back for them. Know your route. Uh, even if people are being dicks and trying to push things, it's always very important to know the route you're going to take. Uh, this is where the map skills come in. Uh, you want to always find VFR rules, which are visual flight reference, uh, or visual flight rules, and so I'm being redundant, of course. Uh, things like mountains, towns, roads, uh, anything you can use to spot visually to help you follow a specific path. Um, take note of these when you're planning your route. Also, a uh, trick I like to use a lot is to switch to vehicle chat, and I will lay down markers on the map uh, if I'm blessed with having a GPS 
that will help me find my uh, correct route. That gives me a proper ingress, uh, ingress and egress uh, points. Uh, is on that, uh, know your approach. Um, Got to be really conscious of how you have to come into your LZ. The last thing you want to do is overshoot or end up going too fast or in the high hover over your uh, LZ, when, especially uh, when you might be running into enemy fire. So study the terrain and your approach lane. Make sure that you're going to, you know, if you need to be on a glide path that comes down along a slope, make sure you know that. If you know that you're going to have to pop up, plan for that ahead of time. It's just about being very present and aware and knowing everything that's going to happen on your way in so that you don't have to spend time fucking with the map or uh, coming around or fighting the bird to get it down where you need it to be. Uh, very few cases where you have the luxury of hanging out and being able to circle around and come back. Also, never be afraid to uh, wave yourself off or abort an approach. Um, it's much better to get out of there quickly and come back around than it is to try and stop yourself and dick around trying to hover down to a tough landing. Uh, go around, make a proper approach if you're having issues with it. Questions? Side note. Go for it. As referenced with vehicle chat and putting down your own markers, it also helps to color code your markers for bleeding off speed and or entering exit routes. Uh, with assistance of GPS to watch those so you know when to start bleed off speed and change your angle of attack. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, that's very helpful. I sometimes will use uh, red, orange, and uh, green markers to just give me an indication of uh, if I should be hauling ass or uh, breaking for a landing. Another good trick. Pardon me. Another good trick. Uh, is if you have a GPS and you're moving at the, you know, most of these birds will go around 200 to 250 uh, on an easy cruise. As you're coming into an area, when you first see that, uh, first see your LZ on your uh, GPS, you can start leaning back a little bit and start burning off speed as you come into it. And if you try and keep the LZ marker right at the edge of the GPS as you're coming in, essentially make it look like we're just zooming in and the marker's not moving, that will usually bring you into a very good speed and altitude for landing. All right. Not caught up too much on using the GPS system as not all aircraft have them, and mission makers can disable it remotely on their missions. Yep. And as a side note to that, the GPS, uh, if you weren't aware, is speed related to how fast you're moving for how large the visible area is. Right, that's the only reason that that trick I just mentioned works, is because exactly. you're slowing down and maintaining the position of a marker in the GPS. Andre. Yeah. Just wondered why you were crabble walking. Because I'm crazy. And then go be crazy somewhere else. Nope. All right, so basic flight maneuvers. Uh, we're going to get into the hands-on pretty soon here. Um, we want to talk about the physics of the helicopter, though, and how exactly it all works. Um, the main thing that you want to know, there's three main points, is your collective, which is the angle of attack or pitch of the blades of the helicopter. When you... Uh, and actually, I want to come around to the everybody come around to the side of the chopper so that you can see into the cockpit. Take turns getting up close and taking a look. The collective is the lever that is on the left side of the uh, pilot seat. Um, you would raise it and lower it to control uh, the collective of the helicopter. When a helicopter is idle, the blades are laying flat, so they are not generating very much uh, lift. As you pull up on the collective, it increases the pitch of the blades, angling the uh, blade down so that you begin to gain more and more lift, um, just like a, with a propeller or anything like that. Um, you then have the cyclic control, which is the stick between your legs. Yeah, and you guys can go look at the cockpits on the other birds in a minute. Um, 
the cyclic is a stick between your legs. Essentially what that does is creates uneven lift on the main rotor. So as you push it forward, the pitch will decrease in the rear or in the front of the helicopter and increase in the rear of the helicopter, creating an, as the blade travels around it shifts its pitch. This will create uneven lift on the rear of the helicopter, tilting the helicopter forward. Same applies for side to side motions uh, with your cyclic control. And then your rudders control the pitch of the anti-torque rudder. By increasing uh, or decreasing pitch on that, you allow the helicopter to spin in one direction or another uh, on its main axis from uh, side to side. Any questions? Is this uh, modeled in the armor? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, not well, modeled on the models, but while the add on MI28s has it modeled. Right, I mean. You, Visually, uh, yeah, like you said, it's not necessarily modeled. The physics are modeled, but not the actual adjustments. It would be nice to be able to see that happening if somebody was in there just yanking on their cyclic. <laughs> All right, maybe. so... Yeah, maybe. One thing that some people have issues with is understanding uh, some of the flight characteristics. Uh, I get... More often than not, a lot of people will say, well, why does my uh, tail rotor stop working uh, when I'm going fast? Uh, and that's simply because you have momentum and you're a ballistic uh, vehicle at that point. So the amount of force that your tail rotor actually generates is not nearly enough to spin the bird relative to its speed. Uh, when you're in low speed maneuvering, obviously that works really well. Uh, you always want to be super delicate to the touch when you're low speed maneuvering. Um, real subtle shits uh, translate to a lot of movement uh, with the bird. And high speed maneuvering, you can yank on it pretty hard and uh, do some impressive maneuvers. Uh, again, you know, in any other realistic flight sim, odds are if you do something too crazy, you're just going to rip your rotors off. Uh, if you land too hard, your rotors might actually hit the ground or the bird. Um, but Arma 2 is extremely forgiving in those respects. Uh, and stopping is essentially just countering your momentum. Uh, when you need to stop a bird, if you're moving forward, you want to adjust your cyclic so that your bird is angled, pushing against the direction that you're moving. Uh, when you're performing low speed maneuvers side to side, always remember that you have to counter the momentum you've built up in order to stop. So just lay, laying it level, you're, you're going to continue to move uh, in the direction you were going because of the momentum. So just kick it to the side, opposite direction a little bit, and create a counterforce, and you will stop. All right, um, any questions before we go hands-on and start crashing birds? Uh, as we do this section, uh, we're going to be performing a few very simple basic maneuvers. Um, after we complete each maneuver uh, and we land, hop out of your birds, everybody gather again so that we can discuss what we just did and answer any questions or address any issues people might have. Um, right now, there are four flights of birds over that way to our south. Um, if you are assigned with an instructor, like if you're in Death Strikes group or Objects group, uh, travel with them, and uh, we'll go get some uh, you know, 63 to fly. Uh, hi, Gert. Awesome. Over here. Instructors, this is his first time on the map. Uh, we have little birds for our own personal use so we can move around quickly and avoid them. Also, big danger factor, uh, this map has a custom script in each helicopter that allows you to simulate damage to your main engine and to your anti-torque. We'll use that later. Please don't hit that right now. If you hit it on accident, there's an abort simulation on the scroll wheel. Uh, use that. Yeah, well, it works. Alright, we're gonna take the uh, 
Yeah, we'll take this first row. Death strike, flight, take the second row of Black Hawk, drug out. You may climb right. in, do not start engine. So, hop in your if you remember how you were slided, hop in your helicopter, uh, if you're facing the helicopters, cockpits from left to right, one, two, and three. Remember your number. Andrew, People go in, grab a uh, N60. People in Mongo's group. People in Mongo's group are Eagle 1, Eagle 2, and Eagle 3.